Hello friends, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So this is the lecture three of software project management unit one that is introduction to software project management. So in this video, we'll learn about the activities covered by software project management. So these previous three topics were already covered in the lecture one and lecture two video. So the link of that videos are given in the description as well as in the I button. You can check out those videos. So there are various activities which are covered under the software project management. So first is project planning. So from the name only we can understand that it is something related to the planning of the project. So planning of the project is done before the actual implementation or the development of the project. So this is what is nothing but the project plan. So it is a set of multiple processes or we can say that it is a task that performed before construction of the product starts. If the planning is correct or if the planning is good, then there are more chances that the software project or any project will be successful. So it is important to plan the project correctly. Now, sec uh, second activity is the scope management. So scope management is also very important because it describes the scope of the project. So now what do uh, we mean by the scope of the project? So it includes the uh, actual actually how we are going to develop the uh, project, which technologies we are going to use, which features we want to use, what are the requirements of the clients and accordingly we'll uh, develop the project. So it clearly defines what would do and would not. So what we have to actually do and which things we have to avoid during the development of the project. So this comes under the scope management. Then third activity is estimation management. So from estimation, we can understand that it is something related to the cost estimation, right? Cost estimation is also included, but not only the cost estimation. So it includes the size or the line of the code. What will be the size of our code effort, then time. So how much time we will require for the particular project to develop then as well as the cost, how much cost or the budget will be there uh, will be required for a particular project. So this comes under the estimation management. Then fourth activity is scheduling management. Now scheduling management means what to carry out all the activities in a specified order within the allotted time. Whatever the time is allotted for each activity, that particular activity should be completed within that time period. So this is nothing but scheduling management. So here Scheduling management in software refers to all activities to complete in the specified order and within time allotted to each activity. Here is a typo. It is allotted to each activity. Okay. So for example, you can take uh, the timetable that we have for our college. Okay. So in college, we have a particular lecture at particular time slot during and during that time slot only the lecture should be completed. Then after that lecture, we have the other lecture. Then after that we'll have break after that we'll have some practical labs or theory lectures so according to the timetable this lecture should be taken or completed similarly in software all the activities that is the planning then we have to make the design and then we have to start uh, developing the project then execution of the project and then testing and maintenance will not directly jump from planning to the testing and maintenance so so all the activities to be completed in this specified order and within the time allotted to each activity. So this is nothing but scheduling management. The project managers define multiple tasks and arrange them keeping various factors in mind. So what project managers do, they usually distribute the task to the different teams or groups. And they also consider various factors while distributing the task. So for example, you can consider that we have two teams, team A and team B. Team A is good at uh, OOPS concept or object oriented programming languages, say Java. And team B is good at procedure oriented languages, that is C. And the requirement of the project is that it wants the component or it has a component which includes the OOPS concept. So the project manager will assign that particular uh, component to the team A because they are more familiar with that OOPS concept so they can complete that particular task in the allotted time. So this is what the factors that uh, is that are considered by the project manager. Then fifth 
activity is project communication management. Now communication is an essential factor in the success of the project and it is a bridge between client, organization, team members as well as other stakeholders of the project such as hardware suppliers. So what is stakeholders we will see in the upcoming videos. So communication, uh, we need communication in every phase. Okay, from planning to the closure of the project, we need the communication. Then that communication can be between the client and the organization, between the team, between the team members, between the project managers. Okay, in all phases, communication must be clear and understood. Whatever communication you are doing, it should be clear and understood. It should not happen that you are saying something and the other person is taking the meaning of that sentence in different way. It should not happen. Miscommunication can create a big blunder in the project. So it, it will be a big mistake for our project. So communication must be clear and understood. Then last activity is project configuration management. Now this configuration management is related to the design changes or any requirements changes and the development of the project. So configuration management is about to control the changes in the software like requirements, design and development of the project. At a particular stage, if the requirements of the clients are changed and you are able to make that particular changes in your project, then you can change that particular model of your project. Then design, it may happen that at a later moment, the client wants the change in the design, not the whole design of the project, just a single component or something module. So then that comes under this project configuration management. And the primary goal is to increase the productivity with few uh, fewer errors. Okay, so we want to increase the productivity. That means we want our project to be successful and it should be with few errors. The errors can't be uh, neglected totally. It can be reduced. So this is nothing but the activities which are covered by software project management. So in this video, we have seen the six activities. First is project planning. Then we have the scope management. Then we have the estimation management. Then we have scheduling management. Then we have project communication management. And then finally, we have seen the project configuration management. So that's it for this video. If you haven't watched the previous lectures, then the links are mentioned in the description as well as in the i button. You can check out those videos. And if you understand the concepts in this video, please like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe the channel for more. Thanks for watching.